Hi, welcome along to another video. This time, I'm going to be asking some difficult questions about Germany and their weather modification program. So this might not be the video for you currently in this time. There's been a lot of deaths. I'm sure you will all agree with me and send our sympathies to the people involved. And when I say ask difficult questions, really, it's only one. And it's about Germany's weather modification program. Do they have one? The answer is yes along with other countries in the region. So I'm not going to say that without showing you evidence. There are links in the information section of this video to the websites shown and the flight logs. In a previous video, I have touched on this. We're definitely going to go into a bit more detail this time. So starting from the World Meteorological Organization's weather modification report from 2006, does Germany have a weather modification program? Yes. Where? Rosenheim. It's hail suppression and it started in 1975. There is also a program in Rems Muir, also hail suppression, started in 1981. Both of these programs report to the German Weather Service. So the natural place to start, I contacted the German Weather Service and asked them if the programs in Rems Muir and Rosenheim were active. In the reply I received, I was told that the person that receives those reports that deals with it cannot say anything specific. They couldn't say anything concrete in response. And they attached some information from 1993 that speaks about weather modification. I replied thanking them for the document from 1993, asking where I can find information on the projects that they're reporting on. That information does exist. In those reports it clearly states that those projects were reporting to the German Weather Service so they have that data. The person dealing with the data cannot give a concrete answer about whether it's still going on or what's happening. They give an article from 1993 but we know in 2006 they received reports which they then reported to the World Meteorological Organization. So they do have the data. I asked again and they had found another link that they sent to me, which was from 1979. And it's the same information that was in the link from 1993. It's just the original version of it from 1979. I responded again, asking for information regarding the current situation. They replied to me, they don't have that information. And that's kind of where we're at. So if we take a quick look at the information that they provided from the 1979 document, there is a table there with the active projects dating from 1948 up to 1982. So from 1948 up to 1963, the area of Tessin in northeast Germany and 76 to 82, central Schweiz in Switzerland. You can see the substance in 1948 to 1953 was TNT and then from 1953 onwards they moved on to silver iodide with the technology used being generators or rockets. The document from 1993 is the same information and so to round up the history side of things if we go to the Hale Research Rosenheim website there is a historical section which says this, as early as the 1930s, the first experiments on hail defense were carried out in the district of Rosenheim. First with simple hail rockets that were shot from the ground into the clouds and released silver iodide there. In 1958, on the initiative of the then district administrator, a first 10 year field trial was launched. And then if we go on to the newest generator technology page. We'll just go through a piece of this. The generator technology of hail defense was getting old, so failures increased. The maintenance effort became even greater. Even the generators developed more than 10 years ago by the Croatian company Kronos did not bring the stability necessary for successful applications. Since the manufacturer was also far away and the necessary support was difficult, the hail pilots set to work themselves and improved the generator of the company Kronos. 
or had a completely new generator developed according to the current application needs. Of course, a number of experts were involved, without whom such a development would not have been possible. The new generators were manufactured under the supervision of Rosenheim University of Applied Sciences. A major challenge was the permanent maintenance-free ignition device, as silver iodide smoke in combination with moisture has a strong electrically conductive effect and is therefore very problematic. Another requirement was the complete conversion of the silver iodide solution into smoke particles at all flight conditions and different flow rates. This problem could also be solved by a fully electronic and easy to use control system for the pilot. All cabling and installations could be used on the aircraft side. The next few years will show whether the technology was stable and successful. So that's the last 10 years and the next few years. Okay, flight logs for July 2021 in the Rems Muir area, in the Stuttgart area. There is a short history and also a link to a form that you can fill in to do with what you observe from the weather modification activities that are carried out. Further down the page are links to the flight logs of the weather modification activities. On the 15th of July, around lunchtime, it was announced about the floods widely across the media that nearly 100 people had died, loads were missing in Germany. So approximately six hours after it was announced about those deaths, Flight D EWGV carried out weather modification activity over Stuttgart for one hour, dispersing 20 litres of silver iodide. About one hour before that, at around 5pm local time, flight PHPAZ deployed its weather modification generator for about 30 minutes, dispersing 10 litres of silver iodide. The same flight deployed again around the same time as DEWGV and dispersed another 10 litres of silver iodide. That was on the 15th of July. There was a bit of a break in their activity and you would think with what's going on still that they would not be active. But unfortunately they have been. So did they stop modifying the weather? No. I wish I could say to you yes, but the answer is no. Flight PHPAZ flew on the 24th of July currently four days ago and dispersed 12 litres of silver iodide for 45 minutes. Flight DEWGV flew at 4pm on the 24th of July for just over one hour and dispersed 35 litres of silver iodide. You will be able to find all the flight logs on the Rems Muir Kreis website. So I'm sure you are left with the same question that I have. How does someone get into an aeroplane to carry out weather modification activities knowing what's going on on the ground. I'm truly sorry for you if you, you have watched this and you have lost people close to you or you've just had a traumatic time about these, this stuff. But you have a right to know what people are doing when you think something else is probably happening. In the next video, we'll talk about the China floods because about 300 people have died in them. See you next time.